Miles. First regular season meeting since 2012. We are just about set, ready to go. Mary Ashley Stevenson win the opening tip for the Boilers, and we are underway in South Bend. Today, Terry will set up the offense, the high ball screen from Caitlin Harper. Purdue six and four on the year. They've already played one game in the Big Ten, a loss to Minnesota, a game in which the Boilermakers led late. Work it inside out, and off the pump fake, that's a three for Abby Ellis Snow. Starting five for Notre Dame, Hidalgo Westbelt having perhaps her best season so far in her career. Watson, DeWolf, and Bransford round out the starting five. Off the bounce and a steal. It's what Hannah Hidalgo does best. And in transition, two free throws coming for Notre Dame on the bump. Right away, Hannah Hidalgo dropping in transition. Purdue really wants to try to keep her off of the ball handler, make her work off ball defense. But she is just, her instincts are terrific, sees the drop coverage, gets the breakout in transition, and gets KK Bransford an opportunity at the foul line. The foul call on Stevenson, Notre Dame on the board first. KK Bransford staff shooting 82% at the line this year. Hidalgo has really lived up to the hype, and Coach Neil Ivey really didn't back down from it upon her signing as you take a look at Purdue starting five. Layton Harper, Ellis Stevenson, and Janae Terry. We'll go back to the Fighting Irish here. When you have a player that's as hyped as Hannah Hidalgo, who comes in just ready to go. I mean, you know, a lot of players, it takes them a little while to adjust. It didn't take her any time at all to adjust. Yeah, 31, as you mentioned, right out of the gate against South Carolina. Shot was off the mark by Watson. And on the other end, Purdue yet to crack the scoring column. Here's Hidalgo. Then all the steals at number three in white hat. In and out on the layup. Purdue struggles when they have to play in the half court offensively. It's going to be important for them to get a lot of ball movement, try to force some rotations to open up easy looks. Inside to Harper, defended by Watson. An outstanding defense by Kylie Watson that time. And the baseline J is there for Bransford, and she's got three. Getting matched up in transition is going to be key. Notre Dame does such a good job of moving the ball, of pushing pace, of getting open shots. Off the bounce, contact. An offensive foul call. Terrific one-on-one -on -one defense by Kylie Watson inside, stays vertical, gets a piece of the ball, and that's able to initiate the transition break. Bransford, so good in that mid-range, knocks down the two. That's a lost art, isn't it? We don't see a ton of the mid-range anymore in college hoops, do we? We don't. We certainly don't. Off the bounce, off the pull-up. Back-to-back buckets after the turnover by Layden. Westfeld connects to make it 5 nothing. For a team that struggles to score, Stephanie, what can Purdue do to be more efficient offensively? Is there a simple solution? Well, they got to find a way to get out in transition, and there's Hannah Hidalgo continuing to cause problems. If I'm Katie Gerrards, yes, I want to talk about it. Hidalgo with two steals, igniting the fast break. 7-0 our score, a timeout called by Purdue as we step aside. What I feel in my heart during the Subaru Share the Love event, it's just so rewarding. We believe in love, not just our customers, but also our community. And the Subaru Share the Love event is truly an example of that. Over $285 million donated is phenomenal. It absolutely sets us apart from all other car companies. Right now, get a new Subaru, and Subaru and our retailers will donate $300 to charity. Get 2.9% APR financing on a new 2024 Outback during the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. The most passion, the most intensity.
intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Taking the tours, I'm wrecking the land. I keep it hardcore because it's dope, man. What better way to get the juices flowing and to get your adrenaline going? Yes, it is, Jerome! I keep it hardcore like you never saw your wanna be. College football playoff semifinals, New Year's Day on ESPN. Well, it's hard to believe it was 22 years ago. Dateline, St. Louis, Purdue, and Notre Dame in a championship game that featured two teams from the state of Indiana. Back and forth we went, Neil Ivey getting the job done for head coach Muffet McGraw, the future Hall of Famer. But it was Ruth Riley and two late free throws that ended up being the difference as Notre Dame closed the game strong in a two-point win with Riley's free throws being the difference, 5.8 seconds to go. And what you know it today, the uh, banner hanging in the Raptors here at the Joyce Center and the statue being unveiled earlier this morning outside of Muffet McGraw. We'll tell you more about that in just one minute. But uh, there's your starting point guard that day. And Neil Ivey and uh, Kelly Kamara also in the building. A guard for Purdue at the time, Stephanie. I remember watching that game sitting in the stands. And of course, Neil Ivey, the point guard, the great Ruth Riley on that team as well and just the the evolution of what Muffet McGraw has done with this Notre Dame program what she continues to do in the South Bend community you know we're going to get into that but it's it's just really incredible and I don't think it's any coincidence that you see Neil Ivey the point guard on that team now roaming the sidelines what a national championship as a player as an assistant coach in South Bend and now trying to do so as a head coach. The recruiting efforts have been outstanding since taking over. Still 7-0, Purdue yet to crack the scoring column. Up and in, and the bounce by Matty Westbelder, second bucket, it's 9-0. And Purdue already with five turnovers, Stephanie. Well, uh, Purdue's got to take care of the basketball. It was one of the concerns for Katie Gerald's is really limiting turnovers. It has been what's hurt them in the games that they've lost this season. But I like the execution by Notre Dame, finding where the mismatch is, allowing their team to go to work. Maddie Westbelt, she can play it on the post, she can initiate the break. Not that and how good is that Marshall been? Off the bench, she's been a spark, especially the last four games, really growing into her role. Well, you pointed out earlier this week, she's averaging 15 points per game in her last four. 11-0 Notre Dame, almost halfway through the first quarter. And Janae Terry off the mark. It's the Fighting Irish again. With Hidalgo just oozing confidence short this time. A sweet jumper in the mid-range there for Abby Ellis. And that's what Purdue is going to have to do. They're going to have to be disciplined to box outs, get defensive rebounds, try to create some turnovers, get some looks in transition. Of course, you won a national championship at Purdue just two years before that game was played. You mentioned 
you were in the building. What's it like to play for a national championship, win one, and then watch your team just two years later? Another bucket, that's a three by Terry. Well, you know, you certainly go from the thrill of winning a championship and the team gets back to the to the Final Four, an exciting opportunity. I think I was most proud that it was an all-Indiana national championship game. Yeah, special moment for anyone from the States. Quickly ahead, the layup no by Ellis, the putback yes. And here come the Boilermakers, now a 7-0 burst to make it a two-possession game. You know, and sometimes it's just a matter of settling in. There are, there are a lot of new players on this Purdue roster, have not played in an environment like this, and settling in, getting yourself used to what the feel is like. And I'm sure Katie Gerald's talked to her team about, hey, relax, we've got to get opportunities for ourselves in transition. We've got to take open shots, and we've got to make open shots. So now for the basket by Madison Layton. Purdue back to work. Tested jumper, no, and that was a quick trigger by Ellis. Here comes Hidalgo. Off the screen, weaving her way through traffic and the bounce. She's just so good at her pace. A little hesitation at the free throw line because she has the ability to knock down that shot and then going right around the big and finishing at the rim. Notre Dame really dominating in the interior. Hard to believe she's just a freshman. Madison Layden, no, and the rebound by Notre Dame. I mean, we said a lot of the same things about Olivia Miles when she stepped foot on campus in South Bend for the first time. Hidalgo does it in different ways. Those are missed opportunities for Purdue that they can't afford. Anytime you get up, shots at the rim, you've got to be able to finish those. They have trouble scoring anyway, so knocking down those shots is important. Ransford off the mark. Here comes Terry and an opportunity now for Purdue. Open look, Ellis, that's a three. And Hidalgo will slow things down. See, again, as a freshman, she just has this natural instinct to understand when to push, when to take her foot off the gas, so to speak. She's got a lot of those things that you just can't teach. She's got the intangibles, understanding the pace. Again, right there, attacking the big. You've got to come up and respect her ability to knock down that pull up. And so her change of pace, change of speed. You mentioned her, her, her ability to come in and just make an impact. And, and the thing that, about her and Olivia Miles as well is they come in with this confidence, with this swag. And in the absence, as Purdue gets another two, in the absence of having an Olivia Miles and a Sonia Citron on the floor, the swagger and the confidence that Hannah Hidalgo brings is able to permeate the rest of this team. I would think it just makes you feel like you have a chance in any game, regardless of the situation. And I know Notre Dame stumbled right out of the gate against South Carolina. Trailed by 15 against the Lady Balls in Knoxville just a couple weeks later, but came back and won that game. And facing some adversity there, already felt like this team grew up a little bit that afternoon. Off another steal, Hidalgo will back things out. Nat Marshall goes to work. I guess that's my way of saying, Stephanie, I would be very curious to see what a Notre Dame-South Carolina rematch looked like maybe later this year with the Fighting Irish at full strength, Hidalgo having a full season under her belt. I think that would be something to watch. DeWolf from downtown, 18-9. to nine. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about it. You know, certainly that game that they played in Paris, a, a, a lot of variables. You're traveling, you're experiencing a lot of things. New players, young players, you know, trying to fit a system. I think South Carolina team that is so different from what they used to be. Their guard play, their ability to play in transition, to create off the bounce, to knock down threes, really knocked Notre Dame in the mouth early. And Neil Ivey has not shied away from talking about how disappointed she was in her team that they didn't respond. And seeing the growth, the ability to respond on the road against Tennessee in a game without Sonya Citron. But that young lady right there, Hannah Hidalgo, is one of the reasons why. I mean, the circus is in town. The number of difficult shots she's already made in traffic, contested shots at that. Off the charts, and Hidalgo with eight points in our first quarter. She picks up the personal foul there. That's her first. 
mean, she makes it look easy, and I guess all the great ones do. Well, she's on balance. She's not trying to shoot runners. She's going off the two feet. She, she really has great body control and understanding of where she is and how to finish. Shot clock is off. Ellis penetrating off glass. So a surge for Purdue at the end of the first quarter, 20 to 11, our score, Stephanie. Hannah Hidalgo living up to the hype once again. Who can really create their own shot. So their ability to, to create for one another, to make sure passes are on time, on target when they're coming off of screens, and then making open shots. We've already seen early in the ball game two or three opportunities at the rim that haven't been able to be converted. Purdue gets it off the turnover. The Makers started out down 11 to nothing before a 7 0 run got him back in it for a moment. Ellis baseline, no. She was cut off there. That's a three. Madison Layden off the mark. Here comes Hidalgo. And that's a good look for Layden. Layden's a player who can knock down those shots. Being able to get her some clean looks is going to be key. Kylie Watson goes to work and an offensive foul. Mary Ashley Stevenson hit the deck. That's an important call. 20 in black already with one foul today. Well, this is just a really good job of staying. Scouting report defense. Left shoulder for Kylie Watson. We're talking about a young player in Stevenson. Understanding personnel and doing a great job of being in position. Stephanie Purdue, an NCAA tournament team last year. And Katie Gerald's trying to rebuild the program. How would you evaluate the job that she's done and, and what's still in front of her in that position? No, I think she's done a really good job of, of getting talented players, in-state in -state players, keeping them there, which is something that Purdue had done traditionally. You know, as, as the Wolf knocks down another three in transition, I think the next step is, is continuing to build on getting better athleticism, more athleticism, some players who can create, who can get up and down the floor. I mean, this is a Purdue program who had struggled and Katie Geralds comes in and really revamping it. I think she's doing an outstanding job, but it's just gonna take some time. But what I like about th this matchup and Katie Geralds saying, hey, yes, we wanted to go up to Notre Dame. We're not where they are, right? We we're not where they are. We have been, but we're not. We want to be where they are. So these young players need to experience this environment. They need to understand and learn what it takes every single possession of a ball game. Foul was called on Obinma. It's her first free throws coming for the Boilermakers. Games like this so critical come March when you talk about building resumes, protecting resumes, just trying to position yourself for the absolute best seating. Uh, don't forget, coming up Wednesday, after the football signing day special, stay with ACC Network for our featured women's basketball game of the week. Kiki Jefferson, number 18, Louisville, hosting Washington. That's at 7 Eastern. The KFC Yum Center coverage starts right here on ACC Network and also on the ESPN app. A Washington team that is undefeated up until this point and a Louisville team that's going to look to bounce back from a tough loss at UConn. The Wolf again, a heat check, not this time. And tapped out of bounds. Go back the other way. Yeah, that Louisville-UConn game yesterday was quite interesting. A four-point game at halftime, and then Jeff Wall's team, well, you, you tell us. I don't know that they ran out of gas. UConn's just really, really good again. Yeah, this, this was, a, I think, the best that UConn has played all season long, really sharing the basketball, a high assist to make field goal ratio, shooting it at a high clip, and getting it done on the defensive end. Ellis. Shot clock under 10. Will go the other way. Foul was called. And that'll go on Stevenson, and that is her second. So a 10 point game. You were on the call for that game yesterday. Paige Beckers looks like she's uh, getting back to her old self. That's something to watch as we get deeper into the season, right? Right, she's, she's just playing incredible basketball. I mean, she's shooting nearly 50% from the three-point line, looks stronger, looks healthy. 
Early in the season, Nat Marshall gets another two. Early in the season, I felt like UConn was just relying on her to, you know, reintegrating a star player who has the ball in their hands a lot is difficult. And, and, and continuing to figure out to, how to play with her on the floor. She hadn't been on the floor in almost 600 days. Wow. And they're figuring it out. DeWolf off the steal. Hidalgo inside. No. And rebound pops out to Mila Reynolds. And a traveling violation. Reynolds got caught. Thought about the three, then changed her mind. Ran out of real estate in 15, and Black turns it over. And the eighth turnover, ninth turnover for the Boilermakers. You know, when you're a team that struggles to score and you're playing a team like Notre Dame who can really put the ball in the basket, you know, dead ball turnovers are the ones you'll live with like that, but Notre Dame already in this ballgame, 12 points off of produced turnovers. Averaging 16 per game coming in already with nine this afternoon. Early start in South Bend on a historic Sunday. Hidalgo for three. Off the back iron. Who wants it? Purdue has it. That's Sophie Swanson. And in transition, no. Good defense by DeWolf. Just standing her ground that time. Shot for the miss by Jayla Smith. DeWolf, well short. And back to the Boilermakers. But it's rare we get a matchup like this, Big Ten versus ACC. We mentioned the last regular season meeting between these two way back in 2012. Katie Geralds knows Neil Ivey pretty well, and they, they talked about getting this rivalry back on the court. They met again in the postseason in 2017 NCAA tournaments. We'll get the same matchup this time next year as well in West Lafayette, and that's always good to hear. Yeah, I think this is a game that, that for the sake of, of Indiana basketball needs to be played. And both of these coaches really recognizing that. Neil Ivey said she was trying to get this on the schedule while her son Jaden was at Purdue playing for the Boilermakers. Um, but fortunately, it's, it's, it's worked out, and they look forward to continuing the matchup. That Marshall now with six, a couple of mid-range jumpers in this quarter. Lead up to 14. And Neil Ivey talking about Nat, Nat Marshall and just how proud she is of her. You know, she's a player who's, who's healthy. She stayed the course, you know, didn't get a lot of minutes um, throughout the course of her career. And when the opportunity presented itself for her to get on the floor this year, she's taken advantage of it. She's continued to get better. She's continued to grow. And is certainly making an impact on her team. And when you have a team that's decimated by injury, as Notre Dame has been, players are asked to do a little bit more. Nat Marshall has stepped up in her role, and she has been impactful for this team. Coach Ivy said she has been an offensive spark, and you mentioned how proud she was. As you see Citron and Olivia Miles on the bench. You can only imagine the firepower this team will have when both of those players regain their health. We haven't seen it's Olivia Miles, what, since last, last February, right? Two yes. All-Americans. Yes, Olivia Miles last February injured that knee against Louisville in the end of the regular season, and Sonia Citron earlier this season against Northwestern and the opportunity to get them back on the floor. And again, we talk about adjustments. So if and when they do come back, making adjustments to now having two primary ball handlers on the floor. You see the injury timeline with Citron and Miles. Don't forget about Kassan Prosper. We haven't seen her since last month. And Emma Risch as well expected to return in short order as we step aside in South Bend. The holidays on Dale's farm weren't very festive until he saved big on a Bluetooth speaker with Amazon's last minute deal. Buddies, I present to you the Kerwin Frost Box. I'll take that. <laughs> Yo, buddy, let's get that box. Almost showtime, my lord. Oh, no. Go, go, go. Come on, let's go. Hurry, everyone. Let's go. There he is, buddy. Let's get him. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that box is for everybody. <laughs> Coming to you from Frost Way, with a buddy and a meal in every box. The Kerwin Frost Box. 
estaremos ahí por si le pasa algo a tu auto en este día especial. Mamá, para eso tengo State Farm. Es que es peligroso manejar en carretera. Si pasa algo, le mando un texto a mi agente. Tranquilos. State Farm estará ahí las 24 horas si los necesito. ¿24 horas? ¡Ay! ¡Ay! ¡Está linda como siempre! ¡Ay, qué bien! ¡Ven, ven, hijita! ¡Pasa, pasa! Amor, como un buen vecino, State Farm está ahí. Llama para obtener una cotización hoy. Students. Students of any age, from anywhere. Students in a new kind of classroom. Using our technology to power different ways of learning. Harnessing AI to plant new beginnings. So when minds grow, opportunities follow. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or just in time for the holidays, get 8,000 total value for current eligible GMC owners. That's 15% below MSRP on select 2023 Sierra models. We are professional brand. GMC. Sellout crowd on hand back in South Bend between Purdue and 14th ranked Notre Dame. Stephanie White, Roy Philpott, in part the sellout due. We don't see these two teams play all that often. Notre Dame has won eight straight. First meeting of the regular season in 11 years. And a hey, two tradition rich program, Stephanie, you know better than most. Absolutely. And, you know, again, as an Indiana native, it's nice to see these two teams playing each other again. And Notre Dame has really owned the series the last few times that these teams have played and Katie Gerald's making no bones about it. That's where we want to get to. We want to get to where Notre Dame is right now. I think it's great for the state. Neil Lagi talking about that. But the Boilermakers are really struggling. Yes, yeah, struggling to score. Stevenson bottled up. That's a jump ball. And the arrow favors Notre Dame. Terrific defense by Marshall. Does a good job of staying vertical, able to get a hand on the ball. The Wolf has had the hot hand. Beat it inside the West Belt. Strong left-handed finish. You know, Maddie Westbelt is a player who doesn't get a lot of hype. You've got Hannah Hidalgo, you've got Sonia Citron, you've got Olivia Miles, but has been solid. She's been consistent. She's been a starter every game of her career. Neil Ivy talks about her and just she lives in the gym. She understands the standard. She is a leader for this team. She really is a glue player for the Irish. Coach Ivy said too, I've asked her to do more. She has. You mentioned how she lives in the gym. She's embraced that leadership role this year. And you saw all the starts. You see the veteran presence with the numbers both in points and rebounds third in the conference in rebounds per game and also efficient we can lean on a player to shoot over 51 percent with that kind of experience as Hidal goes off the mark and a foul called against the fighting irish it's just going to pay dividends for you all season long it absolutely is and she's versatile you can use her in a lot of different ways there are times where notre dame has played this big lineup where she's the three on offense and defense and times where she's been the back to the basket post player. So I think being able to use her versatility, use her IQ and understanding of the game. Lead at 16. It's the largest lead in this one for the Fighting Irish. Nearly a turnover. Shot clock under 10, Ellis. Back to Terry. Notre Dame's defense persistently outstanding. How about that look? Inside to Marshall. An eight nothing run in the last four and a half minutes. And here comes Notre Dame with its largest lead. Buddies, 
I present to you the Kerwin Frost Box. Yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> Yo, buddy, let's get that box. Almost showtime, my lord. Oh, no. Go, go, go. Come on, let's go. Hurry, everyone. Let's go. There he is, buddy. Let's get him. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that box is for everybody. <laughs> There's a little McNugget in everyone. That's true. Coming to you from Frost Way with a buddy and a meal in every box. The Kerwin Frost Box. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Under three to play in our first half. It is showtime in South Bend, Stephanie. How about this last sequence? Well, this is a terrific catch and gather by DeWolf finding that Marshall in transition. Notre Dame has been living in the pain. 18 to six advantage on the interior. And a lot of those have been off the bounce in the half court and out in transition. Purdue just two points so far in the second quarter. Three pointer, no. Hidalgo saves it off the rebound. The screen, mid range, all nets. West Bell. Maddie West Bell, eight points, seven rebounds already, Stephanie. She's a player again that you can get touches a lot of different places on the floor. She's a high IQ player. She's got to continue to be solid for the Irish. Inside it, a foul was called. Free throws coming for Stevenson. She was double teamed under the rim. Mary Ashley Stevenson, a player for Purdue, a young player that comes in, and you know, Katie Gerald and associate head coach Kelly Camara talk about just her work ethic. She just plays so hard. She's earned her way in the starting lineup. Here's our Friday night men's basketball doubleheader. Starts at 6 Eastern. P.J. Hall, number 13, Clemson, hosting Queens University at Little John Coliseum. And then after that, Marcus Burton, Notre Dame, hosts Maris at Purcell Pavilion here in South Bend. Should be a great evening of hoops right here on ACC Network, also on the ESPN app. 33 to 14, the first point for the Boilermakers in nearly seven minutes with that last free throw. And DeWolf off the mark. Tracked down by Stevenson. Off the bounce, up and under for Harper. And it'll stay on this end with 18 to shoot. But Purdue just having to work for every single opportunity for a clean look so far. Well, they have yet to make a field goal in the second quarter. This Irish defense making everything difficult. The runner by Ellis will stop that drought. Lead back to 17. Hidalgo up and under. Nearly got the chance for the three-point play. I don't know if it's her ability to hang in the air or the craftiness around the basket in traffic amongst taller players, but she just finds a way to get the ball up on the rim. Well, I think it's both, you know, her, she's she's crafty with the basketball. She's on balance. She's able to finish with contact. She's strong. I mean, Hannah Hidalgo is a player who grew up with four brothers. She's used to having to be tough and physical when she's playing, and it's prepared her for these moments. Gatorade, New Jersey player of the year. Scored 26 in the McDonald's All-American game. The other thing that really stands out, Coach Ivey said, she wants to help the team. And again, you're talking about a player that doesn't play like a first-year player, like a freshman. And it just has a larger sense of self-awareness and her importance coming into this program and what she's responsible for right out of the gate, a block inside by Westbell. And that was clean. And, and Roy, there's a difference in, in players who play the game and players who love to play the game. And when you watch Hannah Hidalgo, she loves to compete. She's not one of these young players who come in and who just wants to play one side of the basketball, right? She gets it done on the defensive end with as much intensity, as much competitive edge as she does on the offensive end of the floor. She's just game ready on both ends, and it shows. 
foul called as Hidalgo tried to spring loose, and that'll be whistled on Westbelt moving on the screen. Lead at 19, under a minute to go in the half. It has been all Notre Dame so far. The ACC versus the Big Ten. Fighting Irish try to win their eighth game. Up and under, and a beautiful spin. The English off the glass by Abby Ellis. Shot clock is off. You have to think this could be Hannah Hidalgo time. And here we go. Fouls to give, and Purdue will take that opportunity. 4.1 seconds remaining in the half. I think if you're Purdue, you've got to try to make this catch as difficult as possible for Notre Dame to try to catch it towards half court because anytime they get the ball in a scoring position, they're putting it in. I like the foul there. That's next level. Abby Ellis just picked up her second, but disrupts the flow of this potential last possession. I like the, the invert right there and the double team on Hidalgo on the out-of-bounds play. And again, a foul called, and Hidalgo down on the floor for a moment. I'm not sure if maybe she caught a finger in the face and slow to get up. It's called on Terry, her first. You know, Ivy off the bench for a moment to have a look at her talented freshman. Looks like maybe just caught something right there in the eye. Need a moment to collect herself. I think that certainly is something worth taking a look at. And you kind of hold your breath for a minute there if you're a fan of the Fighting Irish. And Yeah, to me at first look, it just looked like Janae Terry was trying to take a foul, and I'm not even sure if she's the one who got her. But she did incidental contact right around that eye area. Joseph Bazzilli will take a look at it over at the monitor, leading this veteran officiating crew today in South Bend. And Hidalgo currently sitting on the bench. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if maybe it was Harper's elbow that just right. raised. Hidalgo as she tried to drift by. And Hidalgo will go back to the locker room. 1.9 seconds to go. So no additional foul added. It is called on Terry for the record. And a late three in and out. Keeps our final score at 35 to 18. And a good start for the home team. We will check and see the latest on the star guard. Hoping to be healthy, and that's a good sign. Speaking of health, to see Hidalgo back on the court after she took a swipe to her right eye at the end of the first half. She will start the second half on the floor. And Purdue has the basketball trailing by 17. Trailed by as many as 20 in our first two quarters. Inside to Ellison, stripped by Hidalgo. Another steal. That'll be her fourth. And DeWolf tripped up and was fouled. Oh, and she hurt her right leg still on the hardwood.
I think she just rolled her ankle after being bumped by Stevenson. Yeah, it looks like she came right across Harper's right foot and then rolled her right ankle. I don't know how many times that happened to you in your career, but just watching it makes my ankle hurt. You know that <laughs> it's sharp pain to start, and hopefully putting a little pressure on it will help. Yeah, hopefully she can walk that off, get retaped, tighten it up a little bit. Off the fake on the pass. Marshall gets it back up and in. No, Roy, it's a, as, as, a, as a coach, watching the emergence of, of Nat Marshall in these last four or five ball games and the confidence that she's playing with, you know, it's, it, it brings a smile to my face, so I know it brings a smile to Neil Ivey's face. I mean, she's doing it on both ends of the court. In transition, another easy bucket. Notre Dame has its largest lead at 21, 39 to 18, and Westfeld now in double figures with 10. Well, you, you see right there, Notre Dame's been dominant in the third quarter, really outscoring their opponents, coming out after halftime and making a statement. Just the, the overall pace uh, on both ends of the floor, the defensive urgency and intensity, getting out to shooters, making things difficult, finishing plays, the offensive pace with which the ball is moving, cuts are happening, players are attacking the rim. You can just see the difference between the two ball clubs. Three-point miss by Leighton Terry corralled the rebound and then lost it out of bounds. Notre Dame was picked second in the preseason poll in the ACC, trailing only Virginia Tech. And you figure those two teams at the top of the conference as Purdue goes to a zone for the first time. Going to have legitimate opportunities to be very high seeds in the big dance come March. Marshall fell down, lost control. Ellis gives it right back. Another steal by Hidalgo. Nearly converted another acrobatic layup attempt. And a foul inside. She came in averaging six steals per game. She already has five today, Stephanie. Well, she certainly could challenge her career high 12 that she got earlier in the year. Westbelt has 12. Speaking of that number, a dozen for 21 in white. Another steal. Hidalgo. Marshall. Taking care of the ball was something that Katie Gerald's talked to us about. Just nothing coming easy for the Boilermakers. You know, Notre Dame. Notre Dame really doing a good job of, of making life miserable, of putting pressure on the ball, of, of closing out to shooters. But each time for Purdue, each time they're catching, it's a hold. It's a hold. It, it might be a little bit one or two dribbles too many. That ball's got to move. And good opportunity there by Harper from the three-point line. Just her ninth make from behind the three-point arc this season. And the first points for Purdue in our second half. And Purdue going to stay 43 to 21. Zone. One of the tough things that the zone is meant to change momentum, certainly, but you got to be able to rebound out of it. Got to box out, got to find players, and Notre Dame continuing with the off ball player movement. Foul was called as Bransford attacked, and KK shoot two free throws. Layton picked up her second. seen some impressive individual performances calling basketball games for a number of years. I, I don't know that I've seen the potential for a player to have a triple-double with points, rebounds, and steals. That is not out of the realm of possibility for that player right there, Hannah Hidalgo. And what you usually see when young players come in, from high school to college, they're, they're typically ready on one end of the floor or the other, right? Offensively, they, they can be dynamic and they can score, or they can facilitate, or defensively, they're ready to go. But, but very rarely do you see one come in on both ends of the floor the way that Hannah Hidalgo does and the ability that she has to dominate the game on both ends. 
Watson has position. Instead, Hidalgo retreats. Shot clock down to 12. Watson against Harper. Traveled, tried the Euro, got caught about 14 feet from the rim. I mean, you could be looking at at some point in her career, the right matchup, the chance for a quadruple double. I mean, I don't think that's impossible. Points, rebounds, assists, and steals for somebody averaging six steals per game. And close to that number in terms of dimes. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and, and one of many talented freshmen, but certainly leading the way across the country. Good take by Terry. She'll shoot a pair. 10, 6, and 5 so far. Five rebounds. I mean, you got to add another category there at the bottom to make sure you get all of the legitimate stats on one screen there, Steph. Yeah, and that's one of those things. When you get close to those numbers, you get close to that triple-double or, you know, potential quadruple-double, you, you need your media relations person saying, hey, make sure to tell her <laughs> to go get another rebound, get another assist, right. get another steal, right? I don't think that's what Coach Ivy was saying right there, but who knows? <laughs> it's too early for that right now. But you get at right. that point in the fourth quarter, and, and, and she comes out of the game, and at the end of the ball game, you're a coach, and you're looking like, she was only one rebound away. We needed to know that. we got to tell her that. Well, I remember calling Olivia Miles' first two games the NCAA tournament two years ago in Norman, and she got to the point late in the third quarter where it felt like a foregone conclusion she was going to get a triple-double, and she was going to be, I believe it was, the first freshman ever to record a triple-double in the NCAA tournament, and she got there, but we put the, the graphic up and basically let it run the entire fourth quarter. <laughs> a triple-double watch for Olivia Miles, and she got there, and again for Hannah Hidalgo, it could be the quadruple-double watch at some point this season. Nice move by Terry again. She's been active in the third quarter, looking for the foul, didn't get it. And tapped out, back to Notre Dame. Now again, everything just really, really difficult for Purdue. You got to give Notre Dame credit for their their defensive energy execution, but but also I think the growth process for this Purdue team is is really learning how to get that ball moving a little bit quicker offensively to try to make your life easier. Chance for three for number three, puts it up and in, and the foul. Hidalgo with 12. Effortless. She makes it look that way, doesn't she? The ability to again initiate contact, neutralize the defender by getting into her body, and finish tough shots. And she's going to let you know afterwards, too. She, she called it out for the officials there. And what? Hey, I love that. You know, I, I love that confidence. I love that swag. I love that, you know, b b belief in, in, in the ability. And tell them about it. Harper trying to make her second three of the quarter. Can't do it. Another rebound for Hidalgo. It's number six. The crossover, the mid-range. Fighting Irish have made their last four field goals. Purdue without a bucket in the last two and a half minutes. 50 to 23. Hidalgo tracks down another board. Looking for another dime. Inside, yes. We might want to get that watch up there. Just saying. <laughs> 15, 7, 6, and 6. She'll pick up foul number two here. And the stars are shining brightly for the Fighting Irish, Stephanie. Head up in transition, finds the wolf for the easy two. Notre Dame is rolling, thanks in large part to number three. Buddies, I present to you the Kerwin Frost Box. Yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> Yo, buddies, let's get that box. Almost showtime, my lord. Oh, no. Go, go, go. Come on, let's go. Hurry, everyone. Let's go. There he is, buddies. Get him. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that box is for everybody. There's a little McNugget in everyone. Coming to you from Frost Way.
with a buddy and a meal in every box. The Kerwin Frost Box. <laughs>
Hey, yo, buddy, let's get that box. Almost showtime, my love. Oh, no. Go, go, go. Come on, let's go. Hurry, everyone. Let's go. There he is, buddy. Let's get him. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that box is for everybody. <laughs> There's a little McNugget in everyone. Coming to you from Frost Way with a buddy and a meal in every box. The Kerwin Frost Box. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Students. Students of any age, from anywhere. Using our technology to power different ways of learning. So when minds grow, opportunities follow. Every family has one. You know the one who pushes the limits. He's always up for a challenge. He never backs down, but always has your back. Every family has one. Well, we have three. Meet the Chevy ZR2 family. Chevrolet, together let's drive. It's not like the good old days. 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 Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Well, it's the second time this afternoon we've seen Kylie Watson go against Mary Ashley Stevenson and be whistled for an offensive foul. That last sequence was not elevated Anything more than an offensive foul, Stephanie, you would agree with that, I would assume? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kylie Watson was just pivoting to try to get her space. She didn't extend. Mary Ashley Stevenson came into the space and certainly think it's an offensive foul, but I didn't see a need for the elevated call. No points in this one in the last one minute. Notre Dame with its largest lead at 29. Purdue back to work on offense. See the spacing for Purdue is not there. Hidalgo gets another steal out in transition. Seven swipes, 17 points, seven boards, and six dives for Hannah Hidalgo. And we still have more than a quarter left to go. Hidalgo, the rebound, that's number eight. Well, Stephanie, we have put and the wolf inside, brilliant dive there. We put our research staff to work on the total number of quadruple doubles in NCAA women's basketball history. And there's only been five all time, with two coming from Grambling State's uh, Shakila Hill. So Notre Dame in the midst of an 11-0 run. And I'm here to tell you the official quadruple double watch is on in our fourth quarter for Hannah Hidalgo. And Roy, because of the lack of depth for the Irish, she's she's got to play in that fourth quarter, so the likelihood of her ability to get it is there. See a lot of 17 Irish points. in blue. Yeah, the injuries to Citron and Olivia Miles, Prosper, Emma Rich. You're talking about really seven or eight healthy players being able to go recently for head coach Neil Ivey. Shot clock violation and another turnover, but I was going to give you the stat line one more time. 17 points, eight rebounds, seven steals, and six assists for the freshman Hannah Hidalgo. And when you have a, a player who's a point guard, who is a terrific defensive rebounder like Hannah Hidalgo that can initiate your break. I mean, that's, that certainly is an added bonus. Seven dimes after that last pass to West Bell. Finally, a foul call. The double team on Ellis near half court. Westbelt making contact. It's her third personal. 
And Marshall back on the floor. And a breather for KK Bransford. For all of the amazing storylines happening right now, college basketball, whether it's Caitlin Clark, the ratings, the championship game last year, LSU trying to repeat, the return of South Carolina, Elizabeth Kitley at Virginia Tech, Anna Hidalgo writing her name in this impressive book this year. Early in this season, those 27 steals in her first four games, a 31-point debut against South Carolina. Who knows what the end of this game is going to look like in about an hour from now. Well, and you mentioned it early, recently named USA Basketball's Female Athlete of the Year. I mean, her, her impact is felt in a number of ways. Certainly can stuff the stat sheet up, as we've seen. There are a lot of talented freshmen vying for National Freshman of the Year. I think Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo have to be leading the way. Off the turnover, Hidalgo will walk it up the court. Lead at 36. And traveling, the Wolf shuffled the pivot foot. For a minute to go in the third. Do you remember your most impressive game, whether it was in the W or playing at Purdue, just individually stuffing the stat sheet? Bro, you're asking me to remember a long time ago. A lot of life has <laughs> it wasn't happened that long ago. now and then. So <laughs> they, we're talking about throwback uniforms that are not quite as old as, as, as my time away from basketball. So I, I really don't, uh, you know, in fact, Every time I, I walk into the Joy Center, I remember more so one of the worst games of my career, playing up there at Notre Dame my junior year. I, um, I scored double figures but didn't make a field goal, so got to the foul line and, and almost had a double-double with turnovers. So oh, I can remember that a lot easier than I can remember the good ones. Don't forget Wednesday's National Signing Day. We'll have you covered right here on the ACC Network, ESPN app. We have our annual special breaking down all the ACC football recruits, taking you through each school with highlights and evaluations. Coverage starts at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, and continues with ACC PM at 4. Well, I didn't expect you to go down that road. Double-digit turnovers, <laughs> a double-double in that department. My apologies. Yeah, see, see those memories that, that come up. Val was Katie called Gerald inside. Was, was telling us a similar memory that she had playing in the Joy Center where she was struggling from the floor. Well, the story goes it was a nationally televised game and she didn't have the kind of performance that she had hoped to have. Mom's watching at home. Camera zooms in on Coach Gerald as they go out to break and after a miss or a turnover, she said some words that uh, most of us probably shouldn't say on national television. Mom caught it, wasn't happy. And I still think uh, she heard a lot about that after that that uh, that brief timeout. But it is what it is, Stephanie. <laughs> That's right. It absolutely is. Katie Gerald was a, was a great player, and the Joy Center is a tough place to play. Shot clock is off. Hidalgo operating. Off the screen. And the skip pass poked down. It'll stay on this end. And it is easy to tell sometimes if somebody says something they shouldn't say. We can all read lips. It's not that hard to do. The inbounds and a shot that is well short. The final attempt of our third quarter. Your day-to-day -day with getting back two All-Americans, right, and and Kassan Prosper uh, getting getting back as well is is if you do get these players back, how quickly can you get them integrated? Are they practicing over break when you've got some time to really focus on that, or are you having to do it in live game action? And and that is always a tough thing when you're bringing back primary ball handlers, primary scorers, is reintegrating them back with the rest of the team. Easier said than done. That was the first bucket for Kylie Watson. So 
She came in averaging almost nine points per game. She has two so far. The put back by Stevenson, though, over the back of DeWolf, and that will carry him out of bounds. Back to the Fighting Irish. And I guess that would be the next question is, at what point Citron, Miles, are they healthy enough to, to come back on the floor? And with Kassan Prosper, it sounds like, you know, she's only played in five games so far. It sounds like she's more of a day-to-day -day situation with the injury on the lower leg. Beautiful step through, and Bransford comes up short. Dame in the midst of an 18-2 run, make it 18-4, Stevenson inside. I think that's the easiest look that Purdue has had since the first quarter. I mean, everything has been difficult. Notre Dame has done a great job of, of being disruptive, of getting back in transition defense, not allowing easy looks. Well, if I think you're the point makers, you go back to and you, you're able to look at the tape and you're able to see defensively we didn't put any pressure on Notre Dame. We let them really pass the ball wherever they wanted to, get whatever they wanted, couldn't disrupt in any way. And offensively, just the pace with which the ball moves. Easy to defend when the ball gets stuck in people's hands. Doggo, her ninth rebound, her 20th and 21st points. And another turnover. Fighting Irish give it right back. So the triple double watch is officially on. The quadruple double watch is officially on. 21 points, nine boards, seven dimes, and seven steals for Hannah Hidalgo, the talented freshman from New Jersey for head coach Neil Ivey. More than living up to the hype early in her career and again today with a depleted roster due to all those injuries we've been talking about. Off the bounce under control for Jayla Smith, and the rebound ripped away by Westbell. And DeWolf was tripped up, and a foul called on McKenna Lee. So McKenna Lee, her sister Madison, one of three sets of sisters. On this Purdue roster, the only team in the country that can boast that claim, and mathematically it almost gets to be impossible to have that many sisters on one team, but yet in West Lafayette, that is exactly what they have this year. Kind of a cool story to see within the Purdue roster. And position inside, a foul called before the shot and a make by Stevenson. Katie Gerald's about what it's like to have this many sets of siblings on, on the roster as you see Elena and Caitlin Harper, Kenna and Madison Layden, and Amaya and Mila Reynolds. And she said it, it, it helps bridge the gap a little bit. There's many upperclassmen and a lot of freshmen on this team, and it helps bridge the gap when it comes to communication. She says, but they're all very different in terms of their competitive styles and communication styles. And you read that in the game notes, preparing for this game starting almost a week ago, and you kind of do a triple take just because it is so unusual. But you got to think in the grand scheme over the course of the season, it could be something that could help Coach Geralds get this team back to its winning ways. They're coming off a tough loss to Minnesota, the Big Ten opener. They trailed by double digits, came back at a four-point lead late before losing in that one. That was a heartbreaker. I mean, you mentioned four-point lead with 120 left and between fouls and turnovers and missed free throws. You know, even a tie ball game with less than 15 seconds and, and turning it over. And you know, that's part of just learning how to win ball games. Time management, clock management, taking care of the ball. Good look inside, the put back up and in on the reverse by Nat Marshall. Roy, we've had two missed opportunities for Hidalgo to get those assists. Nat Marshall on that one in the previous play. KK Bransford couldn't corral it. Off glass goes Stevenson. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and a timeout called by Notre Dame. 
67-29, 6.34 to go. Triple Double Watch is on about the only drama left to unfold in South Bend. Buddies, I present to you the Kerwin Frost Box. Yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> Yo, buddies, let's get that box. Almost showtime, I know. Oh, no. Go, go, go. Come on, let's go. Hurry, everyone. Let's go. There he is, buddies. Get him. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that box is for everybody. <laughs> Coming to you from Frost Way, with a buddy and a meal in every box. The Kerwin Frost Box. Estaremos ahí por si le pasa algo a tu auto en este día especial. Mamá, para eso tengo State Farm. Es que es peligroso manejar en carretera. Si pasa algo, le mando un texto a mi agente. Tranquilos. State Farm estará ahí las 24 horas si los necesito. 24 horas. Ay. Ay. Amor, como un buen vecino, State Farm está ahí. Llama para obtener una cotización hoy. Little man. Yeah. Why are you always trying to one up me, bro? Me? I thought you was the number one son. <laughs> All right. But did you remember to buy the coffee maker from mom, though? Once again, way ahead of you. Yeah, but I found a better deal. Wait, how? Shop with Google, little bro. <laughs> <laughs> students. Students of any age, from anywhere. Students in a new kind of classroom. Using our technology to power different ways of learning. Harnessing AI to plant new beginnings. So when minds grow, opportunities follow. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not like like the good, good old, old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, oh, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Well, Notre Dame shooting a blistering 65% from the floor in our second half. A big reason why Nat Marshall kind of under the radar so far today. Stephanie, she's got 14 points and six boards. Yeah, really efficient from the floor, seven of nine. She's made her presence known offensively, defensively. I love how aggressive she's been at hunting shots, getting opportunities. And she's a player who's come in and, and really given this team a lift and gives the ability for, for Notre Dame and, and Neil Ivey to, to play multiple kinds of lineups. You can go small with a lot of guards and you can go big with Nat Mar Marshall's production inside and, and move Maddie Westbell to the perimeter. Those six blocks also a career high in the rejection department, so don't want to sell her short there. She has been a rim protector. Really another steal for Notre Dame. Open look, McKenna Layden for three. First points for McKenna, Notre Dame back on offense. Here's Nat Marshall from 16. And the rebound up and in. Obinba. Well, DeWolf has almost had a steal in each of the last three possessions. Came up just short again. Layton somehow kept her feet on the ground, lays it up and in off the bank. It was that one big toe that stayed on the ground right there. <laughs> almost fully extended into that and then able to get, get by and get to the rim. 69-34, and Purdue has been as efficient on offense in its last two possessions as it has the entire game. McKenna Layden scoring a couple of buckets. Tend to shoot for Hidalgo. Gets it back. Marshall lost it. 
And a foul called on 15 and White. Hey, don't forget ACC PM with Mark Packer, Taylor Tannebaum, weekdays from Mark Charlotte Studio down the basement for Eastern. Every single weekday, they'll continue to talk college football, have the latest from around the conference right here on ACCN, also on the ESPN app. I believe they had Hannah Hidalgo on last week after she was named Team USA Female Athlete of the Year. Always great to see the exposure and the recognition. 69-34, halfway through our fourth quarter. Notre Dame jumped out to an 11-0 lead and has not looked back. Stevenson, no. Westbelt clears the rebound. And ahead, another time drop. That is number eight. Those are not easy passes. Again, something she makes look easy, but getting somebody streaking in transition so that they can go in stride for the layup, putting enough touch on it to get it over the defense, but right into the hands of your teammate. Westbelt the block. Ellis the three. Westbelt another rebound. Already with a double-double for Maddie Westbelt, 16 and 11. Inside Hidalgo. Twenty-three points for Hidalgo, right at her season average of twenty-three point six. Smith, no, and a foul inside on the floor. Called against Notre Dame, and that'll be DeWolf. And a breather for the freshman, and a high five from Coach. And you wonder if that'll be the last time we see her on the floor today. The step back, Reynolds gets the bounce. This is a lineup that Neil Ivey had to use in the postseason last year with KK Bransford running the point. Gives an opportunity to give Hannah Hidalgo that breather. But you can look for opportunities when you have a lineup like this and, and an opportunity in a game like this to, to utilize Bransford, see if you can get some mismatch opportunities with her on a post. And Notre Dame for a long time has run this Princeton type of set where they're able to give the ball up for that point guard position and dive her right in and look for some post ups. Sarah Sernugel on the floor for the first time today for Notre Dame. That's 25 in white. She has it. Junior out of Westmont, Illinois. Impressive start, impressive finish for Notre Dame. Search of win number eight this year. An offensive foul. A couple of Purdue players hit the deck, including Emily Monson. Jayla Smith goes to the bench. We've got Pepperdine and Louisville coming up when we're done here in South Bend. The score has told the story today. And an offensive foul called on Mila Reynolds. Well, Mila and her sister, South Bend natives. Shonda Jones also on the Purdue roster returning home today. It's one thing Katie Gerald's told us this week and in leading into this game. We've got freshmen and sophomore all coming back home. And this is not going to be the only time you get a chance to play here in front of the family at Purcell Pavilion. Return trip in West Lafayette next year and then following season back here 
at Notre Dame. Up and under move by Kylie Watson. She was fouled and she'll shoot two. South Bend, Washington, a high school that another Indiana legend and Notre Dame legend, Skylar Diggins Smith, you know, went to. And you know, again, I think we'd be remiss if we, if we don't bring up the fact that, of the statue unveiling for Muffet McGraw, the legend that she is, not just in, in this community, but in women's basketball. And, you know, her, her former players there to celebrate with her. And you know, certainly spearheaded the effort uh, in, in getting this program to where it is. And Neil Ivey, um, the, the understudy who's now in that lead role is continuing that sustained excellence. And just hats off to, to this Notre Dame community, the way that they continue to support women's basketball, but to Muffet McGraw for her incredible legacy. Never forget being in South Bend back in 2018 for the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. And there were a handful of injuries that year, a handful of ACL tears. And we were talking with Coach McGraw before the second round game. And I said, Coach, do you realize you have more ACL tears on your roster than losses this season? And she kind of looked at me. She said, wow, that's impressive. I said, absolutely. They went on to win a national championship despite those injuries. Just amazing in that run that particular postseason and how everything unfolded that year. And it speaks volumes about the job that Coach McGraw did. Neil Ivey as an assistant coach, job that she did, those players. Rike Ogumbawale, of course, with the incredible shot at the oh, buzzer. Yes. I mean, there's so many things happened that year in 2018, the second national championship for head coach Muffet McGraw in the Hall of Famer and the statue outside the Joyce Center today. It has uh, all come full circle especially when you consider it was these two teams on the floor today that competed for that national title back in 2001. No, and I think it speaks to the, the leadership of, of then Muffet McGraw and now Neil Ivey in you, you're dealing with adversity. And, and, and when you deal with adversity, you know, you, hey, next man up. Like, we've got to, we've got to, I need a little bit more from everybody else. You know, you're not wallering in it. Uh, you're not worried about it. It's just this is what we're deal dealt with. This is what we have to do. And this is what we have to do to continue to, to play at a high level. And you know, I give Neil Ivey a ton of credit for handling the adversity of these injuries the way that she is. And, and this team is responding because of her leadership. About a 10 second differential between the clocks. A couple of free throws by Bransford. She's got nine points today. The Hannah Hidalgo show did not disappoint. Purdue will go back to the drawing board. Boilermakers will now be six and five. They get set for the heart of conference play in January. Shot clock will be off, 13.6 seconds to go. Notre Dame never trailed. Only lost this season, came back in the season opener in Paris against South Carolina. Since then, it has been eight consecutive wins. And Notre Dame worthy of that top 15 national ranking. As Neil Ivey and Katie Geralds will meet at midcourt. As this one comes to a close, 76-39 the final. And Hidalgo still dapping everybody up. 